up at Michigan State, uh, like the way we responded uh, when we were down 10 nothing in the first quarter. Uh, guys kept their poise, kept playing, no frustration, and uh, picked up a couple turnovers there defensively in the second quarter, uh, which were key. Scored 47 straight points and uh, really dominated the line of scrimmage up front on defense. Seven sacks, 15 tackles for loss. Uh, made some big plays in the punt return game. Blocked a punt, forced a muff, uh, which also led to a touchdown. Had a couple big returns and also got a deflection at the end of the game on a punt. And offensively, uh, made timely plays. Six or seven touchdowns in the red area. Uh, no sacks. And uh, I thought Curtis really uh, played well. And uh, it was good to get a lot of guys involved. So uh, <clears throat> all eyes on Michigan, really tough opponent, obviously won national championship last season, wasn't much of a game uh, between the two teams last year. Uh, and uh, a lot of good players, really stout defense, uh, really good special teams, um, run the ball well, uh, good tight end, uh, running backs, offensive line functions well. Settled in on a quarterback, uh, he can spin it. And uh, receivers are more than capable. So uh, we'll have to have a great week of preparation and uh, play our best to have a shot. Yeah, Kurt, I know uh, you largely kind of ignore the outside chatter and noise about the team, but are you interested to see with the college football playoff rankings coming out for the first time this week, how the committee perceives this team? Because regardless of how last three games go, win, lose, um, their view of how what Indiana has done matters. Are you interested to see what their thoughts are on kind of how you perform? Well, I mean, I'll see the rankings, but the only thing that really matters is that you get the result on, you know, when you play. And to do that, uh, you got to keep the main thing the main thing and eliminate the noise and the clutter and stay focused on what's going to help you play your best on Saturday to give you the best chance to get the result. And uh, so, you know, today we got to have a great meeting, great walkthrough, and stack days, moments, hours uh, to put ourselves in a position to do that and uh, not get sidetracked, uh, you know, by all the other stuff. Um, and every week presents its own uh, new set of circumstances, and uh, so there's a lot of that going on this week. I'm aware of it. Uh, but uh, to get kind of caught up on that and, and lose your focus uh, would be the kiss of death. How do you parse Michigan? Obviously, they've been able to run the ball effectively in some games. You talk about them settling on a quarterback. They've never really kind of found maybe the passing rhythm they had a year ago, but they've obviously got – they're good on both lines of scrimmage. Just how do you, I guess, just sort of – I don't know if you say explain, but how do you at least sort of evaluate a team that has had this sort of season offensively that they've had with the struggles they've I mean, I, I look at them and I, and I see a really good defense, really good special teams, and, uh, you know, offensively, um, they, you know, they haven't scored points. They're not in the 40s and 50s. But, uh, you know, they can run the ball from 11, 12, and 13 personnel. Uh, they've got weapons. They've got good backs. They've got good players. And uh, they're they're a good football team. Uh, coming in here with a lot of tradition, a lot of history, a lot of pride, and that's um, part of the reason it's on you know national TV at 3:30. Uh, so I mean, to meet that challenge, we got to have a great week of preparation. Kurt, uh, Colston Loveland, one of the better tight ends, not just in the conference but in the country. I when you have a tight end who can produce like he does, what does it change defensively, if anything, in terms of how you handle a team that tries to attack through that position? Yeah, well, you got to be aware of him for sure. You know, down the field and on screens, uh, various things. Uh, be because when you've got size and speed like that, you can create, you know, a personnel mismatch. So uh, he's an excellent football player. They got a lot of really good football players. 
Kurt, I know def uh, Michigan's defensive coordinator, uh, Martin Dell, likes to blitz a lot. Uh, ha has your offensive line seen a challenge like that in terms of the looks that they'll throw at you? And I guess what uh, what's your confidence level that they can handle a challenge like that? Well, you know, um, we're still fairly early in our preparation. Uh, but, you know, at this point in the season, you've seen most of what you're going to see. Uh, they will, they do present a lot of looks and they do a great job. He does a great job. He's an excellent coordinator, uh, coordinated in the NFL a long time. And uh, when you put the tape on, you see, uh, you know, a defense that's very multiple, create, tries to create problems for offenses and, and good players that fly around and play hard. And it all starts up front with them. They're good inside and they're good on the edge. And uh, they're an aggressive defense. So, uh, you know, um, we'll have a good plan uh, to be balanced on offense and uh, protect the quarterback and free guys up in the pass game and hopefully good in critical situations and uh, you know and then we got to go out and execute it. Yeah, I feel like when I look out, I see you on one end. I'll see the play on the complete other end. Why do you kind of stand as far away as you do, and how do you maybe choose when to ins when to insert? Um, where you stand, I guess. Yeah, I, I like to stay on top of what's going on in the game and, you know, see what's going on front and coverage defensively and also game situations uh, and always be thinking a player two ahead. Uh, you know, well, if it's third down, our defense is on the field, on the phone with Grant. Grant, what are you thinking here? Are we going to return this or, or go for the block? Uh, I think we ought to go for the return here. Um, those kind of things and I'm you know on with the offense and then I flip over with the defense just to hear what's going on so you know I'm trying to manage the game be on top of the game and uh, you know stay out of the way too so to speak but uh, I've learned through the years that game management's a critical component of being successful you know uh, all the different situations whether to go for it on fourth uh, two minute situations when to call timeouts you know, two minutes before the half, whether to push it down the field or, or not. And uh, to do the best job I can, that's where I feel like I'm the best, is a little bit removed. And let the coaches coach. Every once in a while, if I've got something to say, like I brought the offense up when we were down 10 nothing, and said, look, a lot of game left here, one play at a time. OK, nobody has to do anything special. And uh, that's the way I operate. Hey, hey, Kurt, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Can you talk a little bit about the production you're getting from Trey Wedig and uh, Tyreek Tucker? Yeah, Trey Wedig, uh, older guy, played a lot of football in his career from Wisconsin. Coach Bostad coached him at Wisconsin, knew him. He's been really solid for us at right tackle. Uh, that whole group has been, you know, really solid. And, uh, you know, he gives you a great day of work every day at practice and on Saturday in the games. It do he doesn't talk a lot, but really in that group, uh, aside from Kadick and Carter Smith, the other ones are pretty quiet. Um, so playing really good football for us. Tyreek Tucker at also is in that rotation. You know, we rotate four guys inside. He made some really good plays developing as a football player. He's gotten better every year. I'm really proud of him. I see where he's come from and where he's at today. And, you know, he, he was instrumental in uh, Ponza's pick six, you know, two weeks ago. Uh, you know, when he deflected the pass or hit the quarterback's arm as he was throwing it. Uh, so that's, that's a position inside where we are able to rotate guys, keep them fresh, and he's played really well. Coach, the first three Big Ten games, you guys are minus two in the turnover margin. Now in the most recent three Big Ten games, you're plus seven. What in your eyes has been the biggest result or the biggest reason for that uptick in turnover creation? Yeah, well, we're normally pretty high in that turnover ratio. And we started out the season fairly well, and then we had a little spell there where we got a little bit behind. Uh, but uh, they, were, they were critical in this past game uh, be, between the takeaways on defense and the block punts, which I consider a turnover, and the muff punts led to at least 16 points. And then the Nebraska game was 28 points. And, uh, you know, we're doing a good job of protecting the ball on offense which is where it all starts, right? Quarterbacks making good decisions in the pass game. And the ball carriers or receivers are tucking it away nicely. 
And on defense, uh, you know, we're swarming the football, and our pass coverage has been tight. Uh, the first interception, Aiden Fisher was really good in his underneath coverage, deflected the pass, and uh, Farrell made the interception. And on the second interception, uh, Farrell made a really nice break on the ball and a nice catch for the interception. So, um, you know, when you fly around, good things happen on defense. And we're flying around, and a lot of good things are happening, TFL, sacks, and takeaways. Joining you right from Jim last one. Coach, something I've noticed in the conference games is how your team is wearing down teams for the full 60 minutes. I guess, what does that say to the resiliency, both of the physical and the mental side, that your players treat every play like either it's tied or they're trailing? Well, that's what we preach, and never being satisfied, and they've responded. Uh, they've been able to kind of compartmentalize and have an edge, uh, good competitive edge going into the game, and um, regardless of what the score is, you know, the standard's the standard. And, uh, you know, we're doing a pretty good job of that first play to last play. Kurt, I, I know that we could talk about any individual unit in a positive matter, uh, matter, but this defensive front and the linebackers, what they did this past weekend, I know it's not historic, but pretty daggone close with uh, ended up negative 36 yards rushing after giving up a plus 22 in the front. The importance of what they have done all year long well, defensively, that's where it always begins is up front. You know, being able to win the line of scrimmage, uh, both sides of the ball, you'll be able to win the line of scrimmage. Uh, our, our defense has always been about creating havoc and disruption up front, TFLs and sacks. That hasn't changed. We play a little more zone coverage now than we used to play. And, uh, you know, the linebackers, uh, we put a lot on those guys. And, uh, you know, they're running hit guys. And, uh, Involved in the blitzes quite a bit as well. You know, we brought a lot of five-man pressure in this last game, and uh, so uh, you know you win championships uh, by having a great defense. And um, you know we certainly have uh, played good defense here the last few weeks, and all season long been pretty consistent.